Good evening, this is Dwayne Lowry for the DPP Green Desk on Monday, uh, May 27th. It's currently about uh, 3.50 in the afternoon. Uh, the outlook tonight I think is going to be uh, have some initial influence from weather. Uh, we've gone from uh, drought concerns and uh, 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 planning delay concerns to uh, another batch of uh, excessive moisture. Uh, weekend rains in the western Midwest were uh, pretty heavy. I think that was to some extent expected. Uh, this week's outlook is pretty wet. Uh, multiple days with rain chances uh, are, are going to continue to favor the uh, western slash northwestern part of the Midwest. Uh, that is going to be a problem for any remaining unplanted corn acres, which there are some. Uh, tomorrow afternoon's planting progress report will be watched closely. Uh, the trade will fear that uh, any remaining unplanted acres, you know, won't get planted this week and. Uh, may face issues with uh, prevent uh, plant crop insurance decisions. And uh, even if stuff gets planted here, it's very late. Um, not a good situation if you're trying to maximize yield potential. Uh, for a marketplace that's been very much focused on uh, maximum yield potential probably for 60 days here and uh, focused on a, a bearish uh, ultimate end game scenario where we get uh, large acres and uh, trend line yields, and have excessive and abundant uh, supplies and a significant change in the supply demand balance sheet than what we've seen for uh, a few years. Um, that type of uh, trade setup, which has had a very bearish bias here for several weeks, um, we continue to have a situation that's very vulnerable to short covering activity. Just to put in perspective, um, July corn's at the upper end of its parameters over the past couple of months. Uh, uh, July beans last week made new highs for uh, several months. Uh, November beans are within um, uh, a few cents of the highest prices we've seen uh, for a few weeks. Uh, these corns at about the same price it was on the 28th day of March and all of this has absorbed a lot of bearish sentiment through this period. Uh, price action in the last several days has been better than what most expected. There was a period where a lot of people expected last week to, for the market to react negatively as the crops were planted aggressively. We had some rains that were seen as beneficial. Um, and there was a lot of bearish sentiment around, but yet that's not how markets performed during the week. And I think that further sets the stage for short covering activity in it to unfold this week. Um, the, uh, um, for the acres that are planted, um, most of them got planted uh, here a week before last. Uh, crops are coming up, but you have a little bit of cool temperatures if you're in some of these excessive wet areas. Crops don't look very good in terms of color, but these are things that the, mar the crop, the plant can relatively easy come out of that and look much better here as we go ahead. But overall, we still have a situation where the crop is well behind normal, and uh, depending on the timing of heat and pollination, etc., uh, it's going to be interesting to watch, but it's, it's very something that... Uh, we can't take for granted. And I think that uh, it's the lack of timely planning this year uh, is a big strike against the potential of this year's crop. It doesn't remove the potential for trend line yields or even better than trend line yields, but it reduces the chance or increases the chance that it's susceptible to uh, more problems in the middle part of the summer. We also have a situation where this year a lot of the acres will be uh, hitting pollination at the same time frame, so we're not spreading out our risk very well. Um, but uh, I think in the here and now, the most important thing here tonight and this week um, is going to be the uh, idea that we've got too much rain. We're going to have some acres that may not get planted. We may be dealing with a situation where we have less corn acres than we expected. And I think this is occurring after a, a few to several days of price action that clearly sets the bear um, on notice and has begun a short covering process. And it appears to me like we're likely to see additional short covering here uh, this week. So I would say that we're dealing with a market here where corn and wheat will be a little bit firmer. Um, beans might be mixed arguments based on planting uh, more acres, uh, beans, less corn, things of this nature. Um, so I think we start out with a generally firm tone in the corn and wheat. The other thing worth mentioning in the wheat is we have continue to have a forecast that so we'll have planting delay concerns for um, U.S. northern spring wheat areas and Canadian uh, spring wheat areas. And we still have a, a, a dry scenario in the southwestern part of the U.S. hard red winter wheat area. 
and uh, conditions there which are already poor will continue to worsen over the next two weeks based on the current forecast. So look for a firm tone, look for additional short covering. If we uh, <coughs> look ahead, um, if the markets are somewhat firm, if we continue with this short covering process, if we get, begin to question what the acreage mix is going to be like, um, I think we have a situation here where um, if you're a producer and you're looking for places to make more aggressive sales on, on new crop corn, uh, it's not unreasonable to still have targets up at 570 or even $6 basis deep, uh 13 corn futures. Uh, those are not unreasonable targets. This is the time of year where we can get those kind of price recovers, where we can make the market nervous about the crop condition. And we have a, uh, an excellent backdrop here where everybody's been bearish for several weeks or a few months. Prices are not completely performing the way bears anticipate, and we're beginning the short covering process. So it's not unreasonable to still have some upside price targets uh, to make additional sales. Uh, I think I would encourage you to try to come up with a marketing plan now while prices are not there and you don't have the emotion of, like, uh, where, okay, the market may have got to my target, but I don't want to sell it now because uh, we have this or that uh, weather factor, this weather crop concern or whatever. Try to make those plans now while the, the emotions are left. It's uh, still uh, most likely that by the time we get to fall, we are going to have a more abundant supply situation. We probably are vulnerable to having uh, ultimately uh, lower prices than where we are now, possibly quite a bit lower. So it is right to be looking for places to make sales, um, but it's not unreasonable to still have some price targets that are well above current values. In the case of soybeans, uh, new crop values, um, there's still upside potential. We still have short covering potential. We still have crop uncertainty, uh, acreage mix uncertainty. Uh, for November beans to get to $13 to have that kind of upside target for, if you're a producer, that is still not an unreasonable level to get to and I think those are the kind of targets that you look at and I think that's what producers need to be focusing on. Um, we have a situation in old crop, uh, corn especially, where the um, tight supplies could at any given time over the next uh, 60 days even create a situation where old crop corn is is uh, tight, cash markets are firm, uh, old crop futures are gaining on new crop futures and that helps set the tone and, and new crop strength becomes a spillover effect driven actually by old crop. That remains a possible scenario as well. So I think there are reasons to be uh, guardedly optimistic as a producer in, in the terms of believing there are better pricing opportunities ahead, uh, but I think it's also very important to realize that those pricing opportunities um, are meant as a justifiable uh, price protection uh, target and you need to be be ready to make sales here well in advance of harvest. For the DPP Grain Desk, it's been Dwayne Lowry. Thank you.